from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. I'm fed up. We all are, Tom. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with a letter to the syndicated columnist, Dear Margo. Are you ready? Sent to us by a listener. Dear Margo, I think my husband of 20 years had an affair. He claims he and this woman, someone I know, were, quote, just friends. And that she was, quote, someone to talk to while he and I were having difficulties. Well, talk they did. He called her four and five times a day, and God knows how many times a day she called him. Her marriage wasn't doing well either. He took her out on the town until 3 a.m. and lied to me about where he was and who he was with. Shocker. We separated twice, with him coming home both times. The last time I told him that if things were going to work out, this woman and her friendship had to go. Now here's the rub. She is younger, thinner, and self-employed. While I'm in my mid-40s, 20 pounds overweight, and a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> of course he had an affair, you moron. Jesus. Well, he readily agreed that she had to go. And, says the letter, since then I have reason to believe from text messages, one offering phone sex, that they are still in contact. When I try to discuss this with him, he immediately gets angry and accuses me of being delusional and paranoid, saying he has never given me a reason to not trust him. Yeah, right. It's not that I don't see that he's making an effort in our marriage because... He is. But I did discover the phone sex text message and another to go out for drinks six months after he said she was out of his life. Now listen to this. Am I being paranoid and delusional? I know you'll suggest counseling. And I have already asked my doctor for a referral, although... That was more to deal with depression and 20 years of emotional and verbal abuse from my husband. Signed, Paranoid and Delusional in Canada. So let's review. You're in your mid-40s, you're 20 pounds overweight, and you're depressed. And on top of that, you're under the impression that you have withstood 20 years of emotional and verbal abuse. Let's start with that. How is it even possible that you would withstand 20 years of emotional and verbal abuse? If someone is emotionally abusing you or verbally abusing you, this is what you do. Leave! How complicated is that? How about you get your ass out? Why would anyone tolerate 20 years? I don't know why you'd tolerate 20 minutes of it. Why wouldn't you just get, oh, you know the answer. 
Because I love him. I love him so much. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yes, you had an affair. You're in your mid-40s, 20 pounds overweight. You're a stay-at-home mom, so you've got nothing to talk about, and you're depressed, plus you believe he's an abuser. That sounds like a lousy marriage to me. Why would you still be there? Why is this his fault? I don't understand this. Is it his fault that you stayed and tolerated the abuse? Is it his fault that you got depressed because you stayed and tolerated the abuse? And honestly, I don't think guys should get married and then go out and cheat. Uh, why get married? But you don't sound like a ball of fire, lady. You don't sound like a lot of fun. I mean, can anybody blame him for having a wandering eye? Because <laughs> when that eye is focused on you, look what he gets. A fat, depressed broad. Who's uh, staying home saying she's being abused all the time? You know, let me out. I mean, I have a new policy in my life. I have a number of new policies in my life, and they've worked great. When a woman tells me she doesn't feel like she can trust me, I say, well, then you ought to get out. When a woman says to me, I don't like the way you treat me, I say, well, there's the door. If there's anything about me you don't like, it's time for you to go. If you consider the way I talk to you to be abusive, angry, nasty, inconsiderate, bad taste, whatever, please find the nearest exit and get your ass out. Don't tolerate it. I actually told one woman one time, if I'm that bad, why are you still here? Why are you still here? 20 years of emotional and verbal abuse, lady. It, the, the problem's not with him. The problem is with you. With you. Am I wrong about this? Some like it. Some like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. I just got out of from a two-year relationship and... I, I love how guys talk mind. about relationships like it's prison. I just got out of a two-year relationship. I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just left me by the side of the road. I just got out of a two-year relationship and I had to hitch a ride uh, from well, the prison. The Tom Likey Show. Tom Likas show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. We are talking about a letter to the advice column, Dear Margot, from a woman married 20 years. But complaining about her depression, about the 20 years of emotional and verbal abuse, she says she's tolerated from her husband. Why'd you do that? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. David in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. You're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. It is an honor to talk to you, sir. It is indeed. <laughs> How are you doing today? Do you care? Absolutely, sir. I'm doing great. <laughs> you are so right on this one. You are so right. Oh man, got married way young. Uh, and I knew better at the time, but I did it anyway. And here it is. About five years ago, I got so sick of it. She got mad again about something stupid. And finally, I said, you know what? If you don't like it, there's the door. And she left. And about two hours later, she came back. And it's been great since then. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I tell guys. They're afraid to do it. I say, just tell them to leave. Oh, it's, yeah, and it's, you know, for whatever it's worth, you know, maybe I'd be better off not married, but after 22 years, you got a history together, and she is a good girl and now, but at the time, man, I thought she was psychotic. I am so tired of the complaining, the critiquing, the criticizing, always being told what's wrong with me. I'm tired of it. Tired of it. I'm 
and tired myself. I, oh, man, I, I work hard. I make good money. I raise three really solid kids into young adults. And you know what? If I'm such a badass that, oh, sorry. Um, That's okay. But you know, what, if I'm so bad, how did I accomplish all of that? If you're so bad, why is she still there? Thank you. <laughs> that is always my question. If I'm so bad, why are you still here? Yeah. I mean, I have had more than one woman, more than one, say, you know what? I, It's just a feeling I have. I don't trust you. It's like, well, you know what? You should go with your gut. There you go. I, I tell them, if you really feel that way, you really should leave. <laughs> you know, and I travel. Oh, God. And that's the, that, I, I will tell you, though, recently, though, I travel a lot more now with my job recently than I did for years. And I'm starting to get little hints from her. Like, she's not too sure that I'm not out banging around on her. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? This is almost the last straw. So, because... <laughs> It, yeah, because I don't need that, because I never have done that. I never even did that to a girlfriend. It wasn't worth it. I tried playing those hat things out there and getting three girls spinning on plates, and it was too much to keep track of. They weren't worth it. So one at a time. Now, see, if a me. woman told me that, I would say, well, maybe you should stop seeing me. Well, uh, <laughs> that's a little different when she's going to take half your, half your assets in her house with you, but. Uh, but yeah, but we're, we're, we're going to have a conversation about that the next time it brings it up. And it's going to be the same thing. If you don't trust me, then you need to leave. Yeah. I never get you. By the way, there, there's a subtle difference in, in what I say and what other guys say. Not you, but other guys. And what I'm saying is there are guys who would say, well, if you don't trust me, I don't know what to do. I'm pissed. I'm pissed at you. No, no. That's not what you say. You say, if you don't trust me, you should go with your gut and leave me. Leave. Exactly. I don't sit there like a wounded puppy dog. I tell them, you know what? You know, if you really feel that way, you, you shouldn't torture yourself. And it's I time took, to go. And I took the solid approach the first time she came right out and asked me, are you having fair on me and i said i have never cheated on anyone in my life and i've never cheated on you and then it went away it was not an issue for about six months and then recently she brought it up again and it's like you know what this is it third time to charm you gonna why bring would it she, up a third time why would she tolerate that <sighs> well i don't know i mean if, if i really am doing it she should tolerate it and i'm not so I don't know. I can't figure out why. What is it that makes them distrust us or think that we're being bad to them? What is it about them? I don't know. I agree with you. <laughs> What's, that's the bigger question. Oh, man. Anyway, Tom, <laughs> blow me up, sir. Classic uh, style, please. David, here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Yeah, women complaining. Oh, I've tolerated twenty years of emotional and uh, verbal abuse. Like, hey, who told you to do that? You should have got that a long time ago. You're the sick one, Darren in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. You're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. <laughs> Hello, this is Darren. I know. I just said that. I thought you said Dylan. No. Okay. Hi, Tom. How's it going? Great. Oh. Anyways, I have a DTB uh, story for you. A couple days ago, I wanted to go out with my buddies and uh, go to a party, and originally my wife was supposed to go with us, and her schedule changed where she couldn't go, and so she uh, kind of threw a temper tantrum, moved around like she's been doing for years. She throws uh, fits whenever she doesn't get whatever she wants, and so... She decided that um, I shouldn't be able to go because she can't go. And so I 
were invited my best friend to go with me and a couple buddies from the from the gym and stuff. And so I decided I was going to go anyway. And I was putting my clothes out and stuff. And she's stomping around throwing a temper tantrum and yelling and calling us names and saying this and that. And so she's sitting in a chair uh, smoking cigarettes. And I walk out to her and she says, "You go to the party. We're through. We're done." And I said, "Fine then. We're done." So I told her, and when she uh, when she got that, and she's like, "Wow, we're great!" And I said, "Well, all right then. You can take this ring and shove it." And that's it. I uh, I jumped right back on her, and and now we're uh, uh, s- uh, separated. And of course, she's blowing up your phone, <laughs> but, uh, begging uh, begging you to take her back. Yes. Definitely doing that. Yes, she can't believe that I would throw away 17 years of bliss. It, and I, go ahead. It was your perfect excuse to get out. Perfect. Yeah, I've been waiting for been waiting for for years for uh, an opportune moment. I mean, it, we she throw temper tantrums and fits in front of my family. She uh, she if, whenever whenever we're in public and she didn't get what she wanted or enough tension, she would just have a meltdown in front of everybody. Just the most embarrassing thing I've ever known. It was awful. Wow. I've been waiting. How's it what? feel now? Oh, well, the minute it happened, I felt like I, I was 120 pounds lighter and I could breathe. It was awesome feeling. I now, felt like you, a man. I felt like my ball, I th- felt like I took my things back and put them right back in my pants. Now, were, were you married? Married for 17 years. Okay, I didn't know if you were married or living together or what it was. 17 years. Wow. Yeah, the last six of it, the the love making had no passion whatsoever. Uh, looking at a backside always, uh, no, nothing coming back at me. And if you could get it to lay on its back, so it was fun. Then I had, uh, I was looking at a blanket, so didn't have to stare it, look at me. It was just gnarly, just the most worst thing I've ever imagined. Wow, wow, wow. Have you got the divorce yet, by the way? Uh, mm, mm, haven't haven't uh, haven't started down that road yet. It just happened a couple days ago. Oh wow. Good for you. She's still trying to get me to take her back. Of course she is. Yeah. I'm the best thing that ever happened to her. I mean, she's the best thing that ever happened to me is her is her deal. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> All right, Darren, thank you. All right. Appreciate the call. Alan on the top like his show. Hello. How's it going, brother Tom? It's going great. Man, I'm on my way out to Happy Hour in Newport, about to park the car and uh, get in the cab, my friend. Good for you. Let me tell you, I got the line that you absolutely have to use on your woman, and she starts giving you some stuff. Okay. So what you do is you sit back and you say, hey, you reassess the situation. You say, you know what? That sounds like a you problem. <laughs> Every single time. They, they don't even know what to say. Oh, I've used it on models. I've used it on, I mean, everybody. It is, it's amazing how good that works. <laughs> I love it. And, I mean, I had, I had one tell me, I only date guys that are 6'3 are and above. And I said, okay, well, why is that? And she said, well, you know, that, you know, I like them big. And I was like, well, it sounds like it, it's an insecurity that you're dealing with. That, that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> <laughs> it killed her. It killed her. Yeah, it what were amazing. you supposed to do? Grow a couple of inches? What were you supposed to do about that? I'm 5'11", man. I'm tall enough. But, hey, that sounds like a problem. You need to fix that. <laughs> yeah, by the way, nobody's forcing her to stay around. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if and if you don't like it, hey, there's someone else that will. And no doubt about that. I love it, Tom, man. You you, you were doing a good job, my friend. Uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and I'll see you, buddy. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate the call. I love calls like that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're talking about the letter to Dear Margo. The woman who wrote in complaining about her husband uh, having an affair. And then she concedes in the letter that she's over 40 and overweight and depressed and that she's tolerated 20 years of emotional and verbal abuse. It's like... No wonder he wants to date other women. Why are you tolerating that for 20 years? Makes no sense. Jake on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? Great. 
I've uh, actually been listening to you for quite a while since I came here to California back in 2005. You're actually my inspiration for getting a divorce. I'm uh, actually putting in the paperwork on Monday. And uh, today's topic about the girl being insecure, why they're insecure, because they are cheating on you. Uh, David was asking a couple callers ago, asking why she keeps asking. If he's cheating on her, it's because she's doing it. I put up for it for too long, finally put, put my foot down, said, you know what? We're done. This is it. She went through all the begging, all the pleading, all that. I said, you know what? We're done. I pay for everything in this house with my job. I'm in the armed forces. I shouldn't have to put up with this crap. You know, I put my life on the line. I have to come home to you. It's just not worth it, you know? How did she react to that? Uh, she obviously freaked out, threw stuff, temper tantrums, all that crap. I mean, she's done that in front of me, in front of her family, everything. And I just, I just got tired of it, Tom. I really did. It's just, it's not worth it. I've been in the Army for 10 years. Taught me a lot of patience, a lot of tolerance, but I can't tolerate her. So when you uh, got rid of her, how did she finally uh, resolve it within herself? How did she uh, react? I don't know. I don't really care. I mean, she's been she's been bothering me, asking, you know, can't we try it one more time? Can't we try it one more time? I'm like, no, I'm not going to put up with you. You know, I took you back once. You did the same damn thing. And you're not worth it. You're not worth my time. You're not worth my money. I'm going to do everything I can to plead with the judge to deny her spousal support because of what she's done. Whether or not that works out, you know, we'll see. But, uh, you know, I have so many people behind me that know me and that know her, and nobody's really surprised at what she's done. You know, nobody's really surprised that I'm taking this route either. And no one is on her side, which is, is simply awesome. You know, all her girlfriends love me. They love the kind of person I am, everything. And they ask her every day why she decided to do that. I was with a chick one time, uh, and it, this blew me away. You know, we had broken up, and we were living uh, apart and somehow she was under the delusion that I wanted her back. <laughs> like she like she decided to interpret something I said in a conversation as meaning that I wanted to get back with her, which I didn't. And so it, what was amazing to me is she starts giving me a list of demands. Now, remember, I threw her out. So one night she calls me up and starts giving me the list. Well, you're going to have to sell your house. She didn't like my house. <laughs> she told me, if we're getting back together, you have to get another house. But you paid for the house. Not only did I pay for the house, not only did I own the house, but I always said my house was one of my favorite possession. That's I love like my, my house. house. I said, I will live in this house until I die. <laughs> I don't know how much more clear you can make it. That's just like my car, Tom. She hates my car. Absolutely hates it. It's because I spend more time with it than I do with her. But it's and, you, never and, and by the way, you love it more than you love her. Oh, hell yeah. It's reliable. Unlike, you know, most of the women that I've known. <laughs> It'll always be there even after those skanks are gone. Yep. Never going to run away from me. Unless, of course, I leave the parking brake off. But, you know, that's forgivable. That's my fault then. <laughs> right. <laughs> One of the few times that I'll claim responsibility for it. You know, all I got to do is feed it gas, change its oil, you know, and, and that's it. Low maintenance, low maintenance. That's what we like. Yep, and I, you know, I never cheated on her, never had a reason to, you know, but she, she comes up with these wild accusations and everything else, and I come to find out from her, her friends saying, you know, you may want to ask her about this or ask her about this. I'm like, what the hell, you know? So... I found pictures, I found letters, I found text messages. I found out about her doing what she was doing on Mother's Day. Ah. On Mother's Day, Tom, I have, well, I have two little girls, so they're part of the picture. And I had just gotten done taking the whole family out to this awesome, awesome lunch. Spent, you know, close to $100. 
real nice place. Came home, they all went to sleep. I washed my car. I walked inside. You know, I saw her phone, had a message, so I went and checked it. It was her sending a text message to that guy apologizing for not being with him that day because she was with me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry about that. Zero tolerance policy. You're out! I know it was an accident, but what are you going to do? Wow. Just past half past the hour of the Tom Likas show, here we are talking about an article, actually an advice column by somebody named Dear Margo, and it was from a woman who complained of 20 years of emotional and verbal abuse from her husband. What the hell is she still doing there? Carla on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Carla. What's up? Not much. So um, I'm listening to you guys, and um, people are talking about, um, oh, she doesn't trust me, she doesn't trust me. If you even have to question the word trust, it's not there, and it's not going to be there. You know what I'm saying? If right? you don't, If you don't trust somebody, yes. it's if time to go. To, yes, exactly. And, um... These females, right, that are questioning it, you know what, then get over it. Go, go, go on. There's, there's more people. There's always someone that can treat you better. You know what I'm saying? And same for men, too. Same for everybody. There's always someone out there better, you know? It's just ridiculous how somebody can stay in a relationship for so long and beat themselves up for nothing. If, if you're not happy, you're not going to be happy. Yeah, I will tell you this as a man. I will never humiliate myself if I don't trust somebody. Exactly. I leave. I don't say, where were you? Where were you last night? Where were you the night before last? Where are you going tomorrow? Exactly. Forget it. I agree. <laughs> if I yeah. feel that way, I'm out. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just It's, it's stupid. I just had to call and say that. It's ridiculous, though. So. I'm glad you did. So, thank um, you, Carla. Hello? Yes, I was saying thank you. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. All right, Carla, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Justin on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? Great. Awesome. I, I just had something to add to uh, the classic DTB thing. Uh, you know, if any, any woman ever, you know, doesn't trust you or wants you to change your car or your house, you could just say NMP, NMP, not my problem. And if any woman gives you a reason to say NMP, the next logical step would probably be DTB. That's just what I think. So, I don't know. Blow me up, Tom. Here you go. one 800 tom The calls are flooding in here. one 800 866 Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Hey, uh... I have a bunch of, like, I have a few friends right now who, uh, who just, like, love to have girlfriends. Like, that's all they do. And, uh, just recently, like, they all have girlfriends that have been changing them. Like, they don't hang out anymore. Like, they don't like to go out. All they do is spend time with them. And I feel like, you know, they're just, they're changing them. Like, I don't think it's good for them. So, I, I hate when girls do that to guys. I hate it, especially when it's my friends. So uh, what do the guys say when you point this out to them? Uh, nothing. They just say that I'm jealous that I'm not with a girl. And I just have to tell them, you know, look, I don't want to be stuck with, you know, one person, especially this young. I mean, we're just out of high school, you know, just starting college. And they're, you know, already stuck with girls. And I just think it's a mistake for them. No, it's a mistake for anybody. Uh, uh, the bottom line here is that, uh, you know, now the average man lives to be 77 years old. You yeah. do not need to be committed to the same person for 59 years, and you never will be. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. It's just they, they just won't listen. They think, you know, I'm in love, I'm young. It's just I, I just can't I just can't get it through to them that, you know, don't waste your years now, you know, being stuck with a girl. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. I just wanted to I just wanted to get out there and say that. Could you uh take me out with the bong hit? I certainly can.
1-800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Screw these women that want to take away what we have, you know? Screw them, Tom. That's right. Screw them. For God's sake, screw them. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. The letter said, Dear Margo, I think my husband of 20 years had an affair. He claims he and this woman, someone I know, were just friends. And that she was someone to talk to while he and I were having difficulties. Well, talk they did. He called her four and five times a day, and God knows how many times a day she called him. Her marriage wasn't doing well either. He took her out on the town until 3 a.m. and lied to me about where he was and who he was with. We separated twice with him coming home both times. The last time I told him that if things were going to work out, this woman and her friendship had to go. She is younger, thinner, and self-employed. While I'm in my mid-40s, 20 pounds overweight, and a stay-at-home mom. He readily agreed. Since then, I have reason to believe from text messages, one offering phone sex, that they are still in contact. When I try to discuss this with him, he immediately gets angry and accuses me of being delusional and paranoid, saying he has never given me a reason to not trust him. Yeah, right. It's not that I don't see that he's making an effort in our marriage, because he is. But I did discover the phone sex text message and another to go out for drinks six months after he said she was out of his life. Am I being paranoid and delusional? I know you'll suggest counseling. And I have already asked my doctor for a referral, although that was more to deal with depression and 20 years of emotional and verbal abuse from my husband. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Aaron on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's going on? Not much. Hey, uh, I just want to say... This girl should have listened to you a long time ago. Uh, I've been listening to the show now for only, I hate to say it, but only about three months. Um, I really don't listen to the radio too much, so but I just started listening, and I don't understand why women always try and change the way that you are. I don't get, so I, this girl, if somebody has been making her feel that way or... Or she's trying to stick with this dude to to be what it was that she wanted him to be. She is absolutely ridiculous. I've been married for four years. Uh, I've been with this girl for eight years, and like I've been weighing on my mind about divorce. And until I started listening to this show, uh, it was because of you and you know a lot of the, the people that have called you. Because I've, I've taken a lot of people's perspectives and and I've learned from some of their mistakes. So I told her uh, that I wanted this divorce and it, there was nothing. I didn't even want to stay to try and work things out because I, autom- I already know that she's not happy with who I am. And you know what? I'm so much happier being single now. Oh, I've never been experienced singleness. Now, now were, you, uh, were you in the military? I, I am in the Navy. Yeah, I, I guess by your age that uh, you probably got married young because of that. Absolutely. Wow. I, I You know, I wish I could get to all the military guys and tell them that the best time to be single is when you're wearing a uniform, for God's sake. <laughs> what what attracts women more than a uniform? Uh, you know, I know that now, especially because uh, my job now, I'm a Navy recruiter, so I walk around all over town in my uniform. Before, you know, I don't notice too much because I'm I'm overseas, I'm doing doing my thing defending my country. But now that I'm home, I walk around in my uniform all day long. I'm telling you, Tom, his life is great. <laughs> I love that, Aaron. I love that. So how did your wife uh, react when you finally told her it was done? You know... I never knew how bad this chick wanted to be with me until that day. I mean, for it, it took a couple of months of me just saying no, saying no. We, we, we're, you're signing the paper. It took me a couple of months to get her to sign the papers, and I tried. I, I was patient, but it took me a couple of months just to get her to sign the papers. 
Ugh. Yeah, I once had someone who never signed the papers. Really? Yeah, so that it became a default judgment. Uh, ultimately, uh, became a divorce whether she wanted it or not. Oh wow! Well, I would have ended up having to do that. I didn't know. Too, I didn't want to get lawyers involved because I'm trying to do this with as you know cost free as I can. Yeah, I understand. You don't have kids or anything, do you? I do. I have a son. He just turned two, so you know the whole custody deal with that. But um, I mean, you know, that's that's the only good thing that I got out of that relationship was a beautiful boy, and and it sucks to say that, but that's why I told her I was like. What? Why would we be together when the only good thing that we have is this kid? You know, nothing else. Of course, uh, my advice to you, just over the back fence, of course, is I know you're trying to avoid using an attorney, but when custody and child support are involved, you really should use an attorney. Really? Oh, yeah. At least consult with one before you decide to do this on your own. Or if nothing else, do the paperwork yourself and have an attorney review it. Okay. I, if I were you, I would at least talk to an attorney about what you're trying to do. Okay, yeah. I, I think, you know what? There you go again, being right. Yeah. I figured I'd be able to do it by myself, but just by the way, you know, it did take her two months to sign the papers, so she might start getting shady. Yeah, and uh, who knows who she's consulting with during that time? Yeah, that's, well, <laughs> that's true. I, I don't know her uh, daily routine. She don't have a job or nothing, so she got all day to be doing stuff like that. Believe me, when they're not signing, they're talking to their friends, they're talking to attorneys who are trying to get with them, they're uh, talking to anybody and everybody. Yeah, this girl, I can't believe this girl for 20 years, I mean, I mean, I guess I'm pretty much stupid for dealing with it for four years, but 20 years, I mean, this is ridiculous. No doubt about it. All right, Tom. Well, I appreciate the advice. The advice. I thank you very much. Uh, you're doing an outstanding job. And uh, I was wondering if you could take me out Kobe style. I certainly can, Aaron. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here comes Steve on the Tom Like His Show. Hello, Steve. Try it um, now, Steve. Tom, yes. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm I'm 31 years old. I'm happily married, but I wanted to tell you about my friend who's in his late 30s who is getting completely victimized by his girlfriend. And I don't even know if I can call her his girlfriend because girlfriends. Do, supposed to do certain things for you, and she's not doing them for my buddy. Uh, it started out pretty good. Um, I was actually surprised at how good-looking she was. Because, uh, you know, my friend's not, not a looker. He's a smart, nice guy, but, you know, he's not too confident. And she had a great body. Um, but as time went on, he I mean, he was happy at first. Uh, because he wanted a relationship really bad. He wanted to be, you know, wanted. But as time went on, she just started victimizing him. Um, and now they're living in a, they're renting a house in the valley, which is extremely hot during the summer. And she has relegated him to the garage. Uh, they're, he's no longer getting any action from her. Uh, he's living in the garage, paying most of the rent because she has difficulty acquiring money. Uh, anytime she has a problem, he pays for it, no matter what detriment it, it causes him. I recall one incident one time when all the guys were hanging out. He was supposed to come over, and he said he could not come over because he didn't have gas. And we asked him why he didn't have gas. He said he couldn't buy it because he uh, had to repair her computer. And this thing just goes on and on and on. And I think you're probably one of the only people that can help him. Uh, well, you'll have to present him to me. I, I can't make him call in, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, you see this uh, type of thing over and over again, and we try to tell him that he's getting victimized, and as soon as you try to bring it up and, and cut to the chase, he gets very defensive. And so we try to, you know, insinuate our feelings about how he's getting victimized. And, Do you ask uh, him why he tolerates it? I don't think we've actually asked him that exact question. We all think it's because uh, he just wants somebody, no matter what the cost. 
but he's losing his NAD at the same time. Well, it might be wise to ask him that question and see what kind of answer you get. Yeah. Oh, well, we asked him actually why he, one time we asked him why he didn't leave. And he said it was because he was worried she'd be out in the street. What? Yeah. That's the kind of guy we're dealing with. Yeah, but she has no problem with him being uh, out in the garage. Yeah, in the heat. It's in the valley. Does no he own this? Does he own this house? No, they're they're renting it, but he pays most of the rent because her income is not steady. Of course he does. Of course he does. It that stuff kills me. Yeah. I don't understand and, it. Again, I don't understand why anybody, man or woman, would tolerate that kind of treatment. I just don't get it. There was even one point where she was going to move to go to school up north, and um, he was going to go up there and basically finance the trip. And uh, luckily, for his sake, thank God, uh, she the the school thing fell through, and he didn't have to, to do that. But I mean, that would have been the end of his life. His friend, he has no friends up there. He's got nothing. It would have just been him and her. Unbelievable. I I don't get it. I don't understand it, but again, I don't care if you're a man or a woman. If somebody is treating you like crap, you have to say it. You have to say, it's time to go. Because it is time to go. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.